Yo guys, Andrew here with Dadverb. So in this video, we're gonna be reviewing the Cubo AI sleep sensor and everything that you need to know. But before we dive in, we wanna thank the sponsors of this YouTube channel, and that's Love Every. Love Every makes stage-based play kits for newborns up through age four. Now, if you're watching this review, you likely have an infant that's six months or under, so you should definitely check out the sensor play kit, which was specifically designed to develop your baby's dexterity, fine motor skills, and level up tummy time. But if your child is at a different stage, you can explore the Charmer, the Looker, or any other play kit to get high quality toys and learning materials without stressing about which is best. Visit the link below to become a Love Every Play Kit subscriber and get your littles off on the right. So if you've seen my reviews of the original Cubo AI and the newer Plus model, you know that I'm a fan of this system and I think they continue to deliver uh, crisp imagery, great features, and reliable monitoring. Today, they now offer a sleep safety bundle, which includes their new sleep sensor in addition to the Plus model of their camera. I'll have my previous review of the Plus linked down below, but uh, I'm gonna dive into that new supplementary piece that opens up another dynamic to Cubo's product offering, and that's their sleep sensor. Basically, it's a small white pad meant to slip under your baby's mattress and it reports micro motions of your sleeping baby. If any abnormalities are sensed, it'll alert you. Now, this isn't the first time that we've seen pads like this being used to track your baby and supplement safe sleep practices. Again, you don't wanna use these types of devices as a crutch. You wanna make sure you're practicing the ABCs of safe sleep first and use this as just a supplementary piece. But brands like Angel Care and Baby Sense and uh, Hubble, uh, they don't get that one by the way. They've had these pads for a long while and you'll notice some similarities uh, between this one. But this Cubo one is being integrated with a high performing AI monitoring system, which is already a big step up, and it also offers better crib coverage. Out of the box, there's nothing but the pad, and to begin setup, you do need to drop in four AAA batteries yourself since they don't come included. If they do roll out a second generation of this, uh, it would be great to see a rechargeable battery that you can just plug in via USB-C instead, uh, but for now, this works fine. The setup is easy, just press the button on the back of the pad, uh, and in the app, you select the camera that it needs to pair it with, and by the way, it only does work with the Cubo AI Plus, not the original camera, so keep that in mind. Once you've selected the camera, you scroll down to the bottom where it says Sleep Sensor Pad Tutorial. You tap on that, and then from there, it's a straightforward walkthrough of setting up your crib space and pairing the pad to the camera. Now, once paired, the main thing that you're gonna notice is under your camera view, you're gonna be able to see the micro motions from the pad. Now, there is a lung icon pulsing on the left, but I wouldn't mistake in that for respiratory levels per se. Cross-referencing that with the BPM's outlet is reporting at the same time, the numbers are very different. So if you tap on the what does this indicate prompt, it goes on to explain that this isn't so much that your child is breathing, but that your child is still moving. In particular, the very subtle rise and fall of the chest and the stomach while breathing can be detected. When more definitive motion is sensed, like twitches or just larger adjustments, it'll report that general movement is detected or that it's analyzing the movement before showing the micro motion metrics once again. Now the main mission here is to try to alert you in case no movement is detected. Uh, if the sensor pad reports irregular micro motions, uh, it basically cross references it with what the camera sees and analyzes before sending you an alert. So it's a very powerful system, both watching and feeling for your baby to give you just the best possible picture of your baby's sleep. So that's the gist of how the sensor is paired and how it works. The main thing that I'm left desiring is some sort of visual understanding of what's normal and what's not. When I see micro motions in the mid 20s, I'm uncertain of what exactly that means on a concern level. Is it supposed to be in the 40s? Is it supposed to be in the 10s? What is considered dangerous other than an abrupt alarm, right? It's green, so I assume it's all good, but I think some sort of additional indicators would be good to include. So is this better than other premium smart options? It's kind of hard to say at the moment. Still pretty early on for me, but it is functioning well. It's just a different execution uh, compared to the image tracking of Nanit, the sensor fusion tech of Miku, uh, and the pulse oximetry of Owlet. 
Of the high-end smart monitors, Cubo offers a little bit more flexible pricing coming in at $399 for their entire bundle, which is in line with Miku, uh, but they do have an a la carte option of uh, kind of getting you know only the camera for $199 or $299, depending on which stand setup that you want. Comparing it to something like Nanit, that system is sold at a higher price point, but it also tends to chip at the pocket with subscription fees uh, and accessories, whereas Cubo, while they do have a subscription as well, uh, they at least give you more of a taste of their features in front of that paywall. Over the years after reviewing these kinds of products, I've learned that parents really are split down the middle between connected and non-connected monitors. And then within that, there's like another sub-split of parents, uh, of parents with varying comfort levels and arguments for tracking vitals and not tracking them. Uh, and then within that, there's like another sub-split of like wearables or non-wearables. This Cubo one being great since it's a non-contact option compared to something like Snooza or Outlet. Cubo remains a top option if that's something that you're considering, but you and your partner really should sit down and discuss whether or not connected or non-connected tech will suit your family's preferences because it's not a matter of whether it's better or not, it's what are you comfortable with. So go ahead and comment below. What are your thoughts on the Cubo AI bundle or what are your experiences with other smart monitors that are out there? If you found this video helpful, hit that like button down there. It looks like a thumbs up. For more videos and reviews for young families, please consider subscribing to Dadverb. Thank you for watching this video and come back for the next one. God bless. Later.